throne He reigns forevermore Just think about it Just think about it Yeah Why should I worry? Why should I fear? Why should I run? When Jesus is here I'm safe in His arms Safe in His heart Nothing can take me away from His love Why should I worry? Why should I fear? Why should I run? When Jesus is here I'm safe in His heart Safe in His heart Nothing can take me away Father, Lord, we just want to thank you that we can come together and, and rejoice in what you're doing, Lord, uh, over in the stands there and through Jesse, Lord, and what you're doing here, Lord, in this church. Uh, we just want to say that we love you. We want to praise you and ask, Lord, that, that you'd be glorified and edified in our time this morning in worship uh, and the hearing of your word, Lord. And just recapping what you've done in Mexico, too, is going to be super exciting. So, Lord, we just uh, want to thank you for all these things, give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord, and we want to just... Uh, Let's lift this praise up to you this morning. So all God's people said, amen.
shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his. He is mine forever. And he is mine forever. The streams of living water flow.
Amen. To God be the glory, right? You may be seated for a moment. Um, it's at, at this time, I'm going to ask the ushers to, to come forward and uh, please allow me to pray over our offering. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that you provide our needs every time. Um, Lord, that you love your children and uh, you make promises and you keep those promises, Lord, because you are faithful. We just love you so much. We ask that uh, in this act of worship and our giving back, that, Lord, that you would be honored and glorified and that we would remain, Lord, in the mindset that it's you who brings everything, it's you who brings uh, abundance, uh, it's you who brings the ability to share your gospel, the ability to, to even work and just live everyday life. Lord, every breath we take is granted to us by you, and so uh, we just want to acknowledge that. We want to pray these things in your name. Amen.
Heavenly Father, you are holy. Oh, man. We just love you, Lord. We ask your blessing on your message and on your word today and the testimonies that we're going to hear. We love you so much. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church family. Today is going to be a little unique, a little bit different than what we're probably used to. Um, so the children are still being dismissed, so children, have a great time. Uh, if you want, again, if you want to stay, there's going to be a lot of talking, a lot of testimonies, a lot of fun. Um, but I want to just encourage you all this morning that what an awesome time to have Jesse here this morning to be sharing about how we should always be on mission, and then we're giving an update about Mexico as well. So um, we're intertwining Titus. The, we're doing the whole book of Titus this morning, all right? But don't worry. It's really more of an overview. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of snippets of what we learned as a team. So I want you to imagine that you're on this trip with us because you were. Many of us, uh, many of you all were praying for us or, denoted, or donated specifically to us on the trip uh, by either serving at the uh, fundraiser, being a part of the um, different meetings that we had, and just praying for us while we were on the trip. So first off, I want to say thank you. And so I've entitled the, the message this morning, uh, and intentionally, it's green, white, and red. And so um, if you want to, like, turn around and look at stuff, like if you see a photo and it's a little dark up here, you can always turn around, sneak a peek at the back. I won't mind, all right? I won't be upset that you do that. It'll be okay. Um, but I really want you to understand that as we talk about this, we should always be on mission. That's the title of the sermon today, Always on Mission. And so I'll put up a picture here for you to start. And this is Aguas Calientes, and this is where we served. And so if you look on the left side of the screen, you can see the outline of a mountain there. It's called Dead Man Mountain, all right? And uh, we'll get into that a little bit. But this is the whole town, not the whole town, part of the town, uh, where we got to serve. I just want to give you an image of where our mission field was. All right, and this next photo was our team. Uh, this is starting, everyone's happy, everyone's smiling. Um, we, we haven't had any fights yet. We all arrived, and we're all alive, alert, awake, and enthusiastic at midnight. All right, so I think that was taken at midnight before we had our 2 a.m. flight. So maybe they were upset with me for having a 2 a.m. flight, but that's okay. So this is our team here. Again, we prayed for us. We had us up here. You saw us there. Um, and as we start, if I was to ask the team, when did the missions trip start, what would the answer be? Yeah, way back when. Not that picture, right? The picture is when we first got together at the airport. Technically, the missions trip started at our first meeting. But even before that, it started technically when we became Christians for each of us as a missionary in that way. Each of us should be living our lives for Christ. We should be on fire for Christ. And so this was our, our team that we went with. And as we start today, we're going to open. So I'd encourage you to open your Bibles to the book of Titus. All right. Because I don't have all the verses on the screen, mainly because some of them are going to be larger sections. Uh, but I'd encourage you to follow along in your own Bible as we go through this. And I'm going to ask a question as we start here. Who comes to your mind when you hear the word or you think of a servant? I can tell you from my life, my parents come to my mind immediately. Mom and dad, if you're watching this, I love you. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks, Steve. All right, Steve, I love you also. Steve's a great servant. All right, so Steve like, just snuck in there, but that wasn't planned. Um, but servants, I think of this team as well. This team was a great, had a great opportunity to go and serve in Mexico. And the word that uh, Strong's Concordance defines servant as the one that it stuck out to me is a servant is devoted to another to the disregard of one's own interests. Now, Paul starts out the, the book of Titus by saying that he is a servant of God. That's a really important part to this, devoted to another to the disregard of one's own interests. I don't know about you, but most often I look out to my own, my own interests first. And I want to start by sharing just a quick story about a man that we met in Mexico that does this to a T. His name is uh, Jesus Antonio, and he is a migrant center leader slash caregiver. He does this out of the goodness of his heart that he wants to do it, but he also does it 
because he wants to, as far as we know, he is a Christian wanting to serve God. And yet he is a retired lawyer. And so I'm gonna uh, ask that we put up the picture here. We have two photos and I don't know if they're both together. Yes, all right. So he is a gentleman here on the left. All right, so he is Jesus Antonio. Um, and this is the migrant center down in the lower right. That's the building. And they, can, they house uh, many migrants that come, immigrants that come through Mexico. And he feeds them, gives them shelter, and does anything he can to get them essentials for everyday living. Um, he is the epitome and the image of a servant in my mind uh, when, I, when I thought of him. He's a retired lawyer, again, that has cancer, and yet his goal is to use his finances to get rice and beans, the essential food for these people, to give them a meal. And then he, he uh, asks for others to come along and serve a meal as well to help out so that it's not just rice and beans. So one of the things that we got to do, one of the ways that we served, was going to this migrant center. And we'll get more into that later here. But I just wanted to give you an idea of a servant that we met while we were on this trip. Now, the Hansons, the missionaries that we served with, I would say, and I would argue as another great servants, and I can't think of anyone else to represent um, the, the title servant as well. So there's going to be a lot of servants that you see as we go through these, and you're going to hear stories of a number of people that represent this. But let's dig into our, book, or into our passage here this morning. And so Titus chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, I do have these verses on the slide, so you can follow along with me, if you would, either in your own Bible or on the screen here. And it says this, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with, goodness, with godliness and hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, and at the proper time manifested his word through the preaching with, with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. To Titus, my true child, in common faith, grace and peace from God the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Savior. I'm going to pause here and just pray for us. Again, I said it's going to be a unique service for us this morning, and it is. Uh, I'm going to preach a little, then we're going to have a testimony, then I'm going to preach a little again, and then we'll have another testimony, and hopefully they will match up really well with what we're talking about. Uh, so I'm, I'm giving that over to the Lord, all right? So Buckle up, we're gonna be here till uh, one o'clock, right? Everyone, I think H1 had their own slideshow and video to share. No, I'm just joking, we won't be here that long. All right, but let me open us in prayer and just uh, pray for God's blessing on this time. Dear Father, Lord, we love you. We're so thankful again for, your, for your, the way that you provided for us, just for this trip and, and as we uh, look back and celebrate what you did with our team in Mexico. But Lord, I pray that we would celebrate that God, you are our God and we wanna serve you even here today. So may we be faithful with what you've given to us. May we be good stewards of your word. May we represent you well wherever we are and whatever we're doing. Bless this time together now. We pray these things in your name. Amen. As we get into this today, I'm going to give you three commands that Paul gave to Titus for being on mission. So that's what I want you to kind of look for as we're going through this. Again, three commands for Titus that come directly from Paul as being on mission. And I'm gonna start just to give you the uh, kind of the flow of the service. The first one is Paul encouraged Titus to recruit qualified leaders. And so I'd ask the question, are we recruiting qualified leaders as well? Second, he said, teach sound doctrine. Now, if you notice these three, by the way, I'm gonna pause right there again. It's gonna match really well with what Pastor Chewy spoke on last week. So if you uh, forgot last week's sermon, <laughs> Buckle up, we get to hear it again, all right? Just goes along with the family life. It matches really well with what we're gonna hear today. Second, teach sound doctrine. And we'll talk about what is sound doctrine. And then third, we have this idea of always be serving. In the business world, they like to say always be closing, looking for ways to you know, close that sale. I would argue that as Christians, we should be looking for ways to always be serving. And that should model the image that Christ gave to us. He set that example for us, and we should be following that same example and be a servant of all as he was. So as we get into this, again, we're going to talk about recruiting qualified leaders first. And to do that, again, I'm going to ask Taya Couts to come on up, and she's going to give a testimony about uh, the Hansen family, our host, and specifically with Jenny. So here you go. 
All right. I could tell lots of stories, so I'm just telling um, one here. Um, I'm going to share what I learned about hospitality in Mexico. Hospitality, the definition is it's the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers. My mother taught me when people come over to my house and ask, what can I do to help? You need to find them a job. Maybe it's as simple as filling a water pitcher, but make sure you always find your guests something to do. It makes them feel welcome and included. But my mother never taught me what to do if teenagers come over to your house and sit around and never offer to help, and there's lots to be done. But I learned that in Mexico. Um, so Jenny Hansen was um, the, um, the leader there in Mexico, um, and she was the definition of hospitality. We showed up at her home, 16 strangers, and lived in our house for nine days. She provided bedding, towels, even soap and shampoo in the shower, so we didn't have to bring all those things with us. Um, then she cooked and provided meals for us in her home, and she was just the embodiment of friendliness and generosity. She was very kind and welcoming and never made us feel like we were a burden. As I watched her, it reminded me when I would take the time to teach my children something, and the task would have been much easier if I'd just done it myself. She allowed us to be involved in her life and help her in her work and share the love of God with people everywhere we went. Um, she made food not only for us one day, but for the 40-ish people at the refugee center or migrant center as, um, as Jeremy's been talking about. I think of it more as a refugee center because people are refugees coming there, not really what we think of as migrants. Um, but we... Uh, made all the, or she made all this food, and we had one plate of food left over. It just worked out absolutely perfect, and it was fun to see God do that. Um, I taught the story of Zacchaeus in the kids' clubs while we were there, and she asked on the first day if I had brought any visu visuals, and I hadn't. So she rounded up a flannel graph board um, and figures so that people could show the story while I told it. When we would go to bed, she would run to the store or scrub floors. Um, she bought and carried ice and giant water bottles so we would, wouldn't have to, would have non-contaminated water each day. She had to wash all the fresh fruits and things in special solutions so we wouldn't catch nasty germs. Towards the end of the trip, she did our laundry so we didn't run out of clothes. She served us with a cheerful smile and a good attitude the whole time while taking care of her own four boys and husband and normal household chores. She told me that serving people is sometimes teaching them how to do a task and let them do it their way. She said for years they had eaten off dirty plates because her older boys didn't always get them clean. But she didn't redo it, she just ate off them anyway. The boys finally became so grossed out by the dirty plates, they finally now do a great job. <laughs> but now it's time to train the younger two and she's dreading and wondering how long she will need to eat off dirty plates again. And so, to finish, what do you do when teens show up for a week? You make a list, you put their name on it, and you tell them this is when and what I need you to do to help. It was amazing, everyone pitched in, did what they were asked, and it didn't feel rude or unwelcoming to do that. I'm very grateful to have been there and to seen her work, to know it's possible to serve and train others to generously serve without resentment. And so I just thank God that I got to go. Awesome. Thank you, Taya. Should be good, right? You guys can hear me, hopefully? Okay. Um, so here's the photo that we have uh, for Jenny. Uh, Jenny is in the center there. This is our ladies group, I called them, uh, a group, group of women that were with us. So we have Leanne, Sarah, Ash, um, Ashley's on the right here, and Ty in the middle, and then Jenny is the very middle. So um, they, Jenny, again, what an awesome servant. Here on the right, uh, at the back there, that's Sam. Uh, Rex, and then their son David and Faith. Uh, they, we got to learn how to cook, 
how to clean up, and then how to watch her allow us to serve and take out the trash was always an adventure. That was my favorite part. I got to walk outside and walk down some alleys and throw it away. Not alleys, around the corner. It wasn't that far. But um, she does, as Taya said, she does a great job of epitomizing what it is to be a true leader, to be a true servant leader as well. So we want to recruit qualified leaders. So how do we find a Jenny or how do we find a Sam Hansen? Well, I'm glad you asked. All right, let's go to our passage. Again, Titus chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. And here's we're going to start this morning with recruiting qualified leaders. Here's what it says. Paul, Paul, again, writing to Titus, says, This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination, for an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. In this passage here, I would call there's eight good characteristics of qualified leaders that we want to see. First off, we want to see them to be above reproach. Above reproach. We want them to, to have nothing against them. So what does it mean to be above reproach? That's a great question, right? How, do, how are you above reproach? Well, are you holding to the word of God? Are you following him so closely that there's not a doubt that you are a Christian, whether you're in public or in your household? Whether you're in public or private, are you living for Christ? That would be to be above reproach. There's nothing against this person that can be charged against them because they are following Christ so closely that they can't be missed. Second characteristic, we want to be hospitable. Again, the Hansons, uh, how many of you would sign up to, to host 16 people in your house right now? Just without it, no? Uh, <laughs> Ashley, I see you shaking your head, no. All right, so many of you, probably most of us, would not want to do that or be willing to do that for one night, let alone 10 days, right? I, I don't know many of us that would be willing or able to do that, but they were. They did a great job. Hospitable isn't just again, housing them, but it's caring for them, meeting their needs. They met our needs above and beyond. Uh, if I said the, the phrase mango habanero, uh, the team would be like, oh, no more mango habanero. We don't want to talk about the spicy salsa. But Jenny would make this salsa for us, uh, mainly Sam and I, to just keep talking about it all week. And it was amazing. And so they just met our needs, not only from sleeping, but to food and to relaxing, to be able to be energized, to go out and serve, it was great. Uh, it, was, it was really good. So hospitable goes above and beyond from just having someone over. It goes above and beyond that. It's meeting their needs. We want to be hospitable in such a way that we can share Christ with them. That's the goal. Can we be hospitable to share the gospel? Third, lover of good. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to walk through that. But what is good, pleasing, excellent? Think on these things. It's things from above, not of this world. Pursue those things. Things of the word of God. Heavenly mindset, not an earthly mindset. We want people then that are self-controlled. Self-controlled is gonna come up multiple times this morning. So just get ready for that. It's gonna, gonna happen. I don't know about you, but I have a twin brother and one of my favorite things to do was to poke him. All right, and we would just be writing and we would just poke each other. That is not being self-controlled, all right? We used to say, my, we would say, be self-controlled and you'd have to pat yourself. Keep your arms to yourself, right? Be self-controlled. Don't allow distractions to come in. Be self-controlled with that. Pursue Christ in that way. Fifth characteristic then is upright, all right? We want someone that's upright, righteous, as it were, following Christ, and that leads into number six as well, holy. Again, we're not able to be holy in and of ourselves, but we're set apart for Christ. That's the mindset we want people as qualified leaders that are looking for every opportunity to be set apart for Christ and to share Christ with others. 
That's a qualified leader. Not just when they're in Sunday school teaching, not when they're at the pulpit preaching, but any moment that they can, we want them living on fire for Christ. Which leads to number seven, they're disciplined. Right? We want to be disciplined. I don't know about you, um, but I am not always the most disciplined person. All right? And this is something that I'm trying to work on. I want to be better at having good habits. All right, so as we're disciplined, I want to make good habits, good choices. Are we in the word every single day? Are we sharing Christ with those that we come into contact with, whether it be in a taxi or an Uber or wherever it may be, as we heard this morning during the ABF hour? Are we looking for ways to share him? And then eight, again, this comes directly from the passage here. We want our qualified leaders to hold firmly to the word of God. And it says the trustworthy word. God's word is trustworthy. You can, you can bank on it. You can rely on it. It's never going to fail you. Pursue the word of God and pursue him. These are the good characteristics that, that Paul gives to Titus. As Titus is trying to recruit qualified leaders, are you pursuing, are you exhibiting, and are you looking for people with these qualifications? We want them to be these kind of people. And then he, he shares it and puts it right up against those that might have bad characteristics. And there's five here, and I'll read through them quickly. We don't want people that are arrogant. We don't want people that are quick-tempered. We don't want drunkards. We don't want violent, those that are looking for greedy gain for themselves. Again, these are almost exact contradictions to the eight that we just saw. We want them to be pursuing Christ, not pursuing things of this earth. So look for qualified leaders. First command, Paul gives to Titus. I would argue that we had qualified leaders helping us while we were in Mexico through the Hanson family. Um, one of the things that we wish we were able to do today was uh, get them FaceTimed in. It didn't work out, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to put together a video. Sam uh, actually has a video that he's going to be putting together this week, and we're hoping to email that out, put it on Facebook, put it on our social media, and then hopefully even play it if we get that chance to do so. Um, but the camp that we donated money to is happening this week, this coming week. So they are getting ready to leave today. Uh, one other quick update, as we talked about the Migrant Center already, Jenny uh, uh, texted Leanne that some of the Migrant Center uh, refugees went to church with them today, which is a huge blessing. Um, we'll see it in the photos down below, but we got to give them shirts, and it was very funny the rest of the week. Seeing, as we drove by, we would see them wearing our Mission to Mexico shirts, and we're like, huh, that's right there. You just, it's very visible. So again, recruit qualified leaders. I, again, I think Hanson's great qualified leaders. For us here today, are we looking for qualified leaders? Are we just looking for people to fill spots? We want qualified leaders, and we want to become qualified leaders as well. So pursue those characteristics here. Second, we're going to be talking about teaching sound doctrine and uh, before we do that, we're going to have a quick update here, or another testimony from Ashley Cook, and she's going to be talking about our church service and the time that we had with Sam as he was teaching us that morning. Good morning. Those of you who know me know I don't really like being up here, uh, but I did want to share something with you, and so I thought, I need to do this. Um, but when I approached Jeremy about doing an international trip, I was really thinking about my daughter Eden in high school, and I remembered when I was in high school how pivotal that was for me to go to another country and to see missions in action, and I really wanted that for her. Well, it turns out our whole family got to go, and that was such a blessing, including my 11-year-old. Uh, since we were working with children, um, they are like, yeah, bring her with. She can help too. Um, so on Sunday morning while we were there, we split up into two groups and went to two different churches. Um, the bigger group um, included my family, and we went to Sam and Jenny's church. Um, their church is kind of interesting. It was in like a strip mall, and it had like a giant garage door that you opened, and that was how you entered the church. Um, it's a very small church. There's very, very few believers in Aguas Calientes. Um, so... We spent the time together singing together uh, in Spanish, and then we split up into two groups. Uh, Sam said the people that wanted to stay for the Spanish service could stay there, and he would take us English speakers out to the park that was right next door. Um, it was incredibly hot over there. So there was like a little pavilion that we all gathered underneath, 
uh, for our church time. And while we were there, we noticed this man walking by uh, the park and he kind of just lingered in the shadow of a shrub. And then eventually uh, towards the end of the service, he came over, he goes, can I join you guys? And we're like, yeah, sure. So I think Ryan gave up a seat because we had all carried our chairs out there. And he stayed for the rest of the time. And then after it was over, we said, you know, thanks so much for coming. What's your story? He spoke perfect English. He had lived in Texas. And he said, you know, um, I'm going through a really hard time. I just lost my job and my wife just left me. And I was out for a walk this morning and I, was, I said, God, I'm desperate and I need a sign from you. And I walked by the park and here you were talking about God. And he's like, I couldn't believe it. And so after the church service, they have a meal. Um, and so we were like, come, come eat with us. And we talked to him some more and he had shared like his dad had died a couple years ago. And he said, I just became very angry with God. And I haven't talked to my sister cause he didn't like how the funeral arrangements had happened. And he just was it, he was in the valley. Um, and he knew he needed God. And so I asked uh, Jenny, I was like, do you have Bibles in Spanish? You know, and she's like, yeah, yeah. So we gave him a Bible and Ryan spent some time talking to him and said, uh, you know, start with the book of John. Um, and I don't know what happened to him. I actually <laughs> texted Jenny and Sam this week. I'm like, hey, has, have you heard from him? Has he come back? Um, Cause Sam was like, yeah, I got his information. Um, but it was really neat for me to see God working. You know, we went there to work with children <laughs> But God used a totally different situation that we had never planned uh, for this guy to be opened to the gospel. And, you know, we were able to give him a Bible. Um, and it was encouraging for me to see, like, be bold. You never know who's listening uh, to your conversations outside. Um, and so I just wanted to share that story with you about how we saw God at work. Thanks, Ashley. Appreciate it so much. Here's the uh, picture that we have for uh, our little pavilion area. So we actually had the service for, again, us English speakers that uh, did not habla the Espanol well. Uh, we, went, we went outside and uh, we had a great time. And we, we would do our best, by the way. If you just put a little effort into learning Spanish, it goes a long way. They, some of the uh, students especially were very quiet and closed. But as soon as you started trying to speak Spanish, they would be like, oh, that's funny. Uh, let me try and help you. And it was great. Um, so just don't, you know, be willing to get out of your shell and, and know that it's okay. But this is where we met. And so Sam was teaching us there. We were spread around him. And uh, yes, this man just walked up and he was there and out of nowhere. And so be looking for those opportunities and I would, I would submit that what we say and how we say it matters. Just so he saw a group of English speakers talking about God, he would not have gone into the church building, but because we were outside, he was willing to come talk to us, which is, I find that fascinating, by the way. That, those are moments where I call them divine God, divine appointments. They are God moments where if we're not looking for them, we miss them. We could have just sat there and said, ah, oh, you can't join us. We don't want to talk to you, but we didn't. And Sam thankfully invited him and Ryan gave up his chair. It was a great time. And so here's what matters when we talk about what are we teaching? Well, we want to teach sound doctrine. What is sound doctrine? Um, we're going to look at Titus chapter two. Again, this is our longest passage for today. We're going to, I'm going to read the whole chapter here for us. But this is our second command that comes from Paul to Titus. And it applies directly to us as well. We want to teach sound doctrine. Let's dig into what is this sound doctrine. Verse one says this, but as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. And so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, 
dignity and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of, our glory, of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. When we talk about sound doctrine, the first half of this chapter, the first 10 verses there are literal, like here's Titus being told what to tell their people on how to live godly lives. The last part is what I would call sound doctrine, verses 11 through 15. If you wanna know what's, here's the sound doctrine that I have for you today. First off, when we talk about doctrine, Jesus has come. He's come. We gotta be willing to declare that. He is here. He came, he lived a pure, sinless life, and he's come for us that we might know him. This leads to the second point. By the way, he died for us and he rose again. It's not over, all right? Secondly, salvation then is open to anyone. Anyone, doesn't matter who it is. It could be the guy walking down the street that you have no relationship with, but you're saying, hey, I just need to talk to you and see how can I turn this conversation towards Christ and have a moment to share him. It could be your family. It could be your spouse. It could be your kids. How do we share Christ with them? Because salvation is open to everyone and anyone. So we better be prepared to share the gospel. Reject ungodliness and worldly passions. Again, we could go back to that list of bad characteristics, which we're not gonna do right now. But we're supposed to reject those, that kind of living. Four, live self-controlled and godly lives. I, I didn't count it exactly. If I was better prepared, I would have done that. But how many times did self-control show up in this passage? More than once, more than twice, definitely more than three times, by the way. So if it's repeated more than three times, is this important for us? Probably is, right? It definitely is, okay? It's not just probably is, it definitely is. We should be living self-controlled, godly lives, pursuing him above all else. Leave the things of this earth, make it all for him. And then fifth, as we think through this, are we expecting the soon return of Jesus? He could come at any moment. Man, I just think about that. God could send Jesus at any moment He could come right now. What about those opportunities that we missed to share Christ? What about those opportunities we missed to represent him well? They're gone. They're behind us. So can I give you some encouragement? Number one, don't dwell on those missed passages or missed opportunities, but instead be so fueled and so fired up that you're gonna share Christ with anyone and everyone that comes in your path, uh, in in your way, that you're focused in sharing him. We are on mission to represent him because he could come at any moment. Imagine that he just showed up at your door and asked, would you be willing to give me some food? Would you be willing to do that? Now, let's pretend for a minute that you didn't know it was him and it was just someone showing up to your house. How hospitable would we be prepared to share with them? Would we be ready to give them food, meet their needs physically? But even more so, would we be willing to meet their needs spiritually? There's a big difference there. There's a big gap there. So it's one thing to meet needs physically, as Jesus is doing. But it's another thing then to take it to, I would say, another level and share spiritual needs as well. And that's what we have to be about as Christians. We have to be looking for those opportunities to teach this sound doctrine, not just here at the church, but everywhere we go, whatever we're doing. Our third testimony this morning then 
comes from Eden Cook, and she's going to be sharing with us about one of some of the activities that she got to do. Um, and this leads in then to our third point this morning, which is that we should always be serving, no matter what it is, even if it's uh, painting, whatever it may be, feeding others. Uh, but I'll let her share her stories for you. Okay. Hi, my name is Eden Cook. This was my first missions trip, and one of my highlights was something that actually wasn't on our agenda originally. When we were able to see the church in Aguas Calientes for the first time, Cher Showquist had a great idea. She was like, let's paint a mural. So we talked to Sam and Jenny, and we were able to work it out. She's able to sketch some ideas, and then Nina Kautz and I helped her to paint a mural of John 316 on one of the walls in their church for, in their children's ministry. And it was really just awesome to see how God uses our different talents and in different ways to help spread his word. I was actually able to do a lot of painting on this trip because I also helped paint, um, do face painting and the kids clubs. And we did, we helped with four different kids clubs in the evening throughout our stay in Mexico. We would start with face painting as the kids showed up. Then we would sing songs, go over a memory verse, and Mrs. Kautz would tell a Bible story, then we would end with a craft. Everyone loved the face painting, and it was a great way to connect with the kids and to form relationships. When I first signed up for this trip, I had no idea in the ways God would use our individual gifts and skills in order to help further his kingdom. So we could say that people need to hear the message of repainting, or repentance? No, that didn't work. Sorry, man, I was supposed to not do that. Fell flat. All right, boo. All right. <laughs> Let's not water down the message and thin no more. No? Okay. All right. They're out. I'm done. All right. No more jokes for this morning. In reality, though, we really should have this mindset of always be serving. I, I often think through, what if we went to Mexico with our own plan, our own strategy of reaching the people of Aguas Calientes? What would have happened? What would that trip look like? It probably would have been the most awful trip <laughs> ever planned if we would have gone with our own agenda and our own ideas of how to reach the people. When we're talking about this idea of always be serving, I like to use the idea of Gumby. Some of you don't know who Gumby is. If you're younger, if you're older, you know who Gumby is, maybe. All right, um, but Gumby is, yeah, thank you, Bruce. Gumby is this flexible uh, piece of clay uh, that was animated and, uh, well, maybe not animated, but somehow became a show. And he came to life, him and his buddy Pokey. All right, and so they were great. And whenever we go on missions trips, I always like to use Gumby as the image of what we're gonna do. Because we have one idea of what we're gonna do, but it can often change and it seems to always change uh, into something else. And so we always have to be flexible, just like Gumby. And so... If you're unwilling to be flexible, I can tell you that ministry is gonna be really hard for you, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing. We have to be willing to be flexible and meet people where they're at. If all I do is say, come to me, come to me, come to me, and I never go out, I am not doing what the gospel tells us to do. I'm actually failing at sharing the gospel. That's the opposite of always being on mission. That's just when I'm in the church being on mission. But what it should be is that I'm so fired up that I'm ready to serve in any way, no matter what the job is, doesn't matter, I'm gonna do it. So let's look at verses one through 11 here of chapter three. And this is again, the third point, third command that Paul gives to Titus is to always be serving or always be ready for every good work that's going to come your way. And so let's look at this. It says, remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one and to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of our works, done it by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, 
so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people, but avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful, he is self-condemned. When we talk about this idea of always be serving, he gives some important reminders that we must take note of. Paul, Paul notes these five here. He says, be submissive. I don't know about you, but um, submissive is not something that I like to do sometimes. I want to do it my way, right? Um, I often think of Teddy, our dog. We used to, when he was a puppy, and he still is a puppy, but we would say, submit, right? You want him to submit. You want him to listen to your voice, we should really have that same image with God. We know his voice, we hear it, and we submit to it anytime. No matter what we're doing, if you hear the word of God, we stop, we listen, and then we put it into action. That's submitting to God. Doing our own thing will not get us our way. Actually, it'll just cause us to fight harder against God. That's a losing battle. I can tell you it's not gonna work. So be submissive. Second thing, he gives actually a whole list here about your speech, but I summed it up this way. Be wise with your speech. Don't allow for foolish talk to come out. Instead, only what's edifying, building up to your brothers. My mom used to say, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. I would go as far as saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, preach the word. <laughs> preach it well. Share Christ, represent him. Preach his word. Here's why. We also were once lost. We shouldn't look down on the lost and say, man, they're just missing it. Instead, we should be broken for them and say, how can I reach them so that they can, share, that they can know my Savior? How can I reach them so that they can know God? Because it says, but God. I'm so thankful it says, but God. Otherwise, I'm just lost and gone forever. But God. He appeared and he saved us. Paul writing this gets back into um, teaching sound doctrine, by the way. I don't know if you noticed that here. It's like he took a pause and said, remind him of these things. And then he goes, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and share it and praise about God again and share these things. He appeared and he saved us. So remind him again. Preach it once and then preach it twice and then keep going and preach that same message. He appeared and is here to save us. He has saved us. Now share it with others. He goes as far as saying, insist on these things. Insist on them. What in your life do you insist on? Maybe it's the seat you sit in on Sunday morning. You insist that you sit here. It's okay. I'm not, by the way, don't feel upset about that. All right, I do the same thing. We sit right over here every Sunday. At the same time, if you go back to the list though, at the end, if you look at it, it says avoid dissensions, quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable. Foolish controversies, genealogies. What are some of the foolish controversies that we argue? I can give you one word, and it's going to stir up controversy. Sports. I could say White Sox and Cubs, and like half of you are going to hate me, and half of you are going to love me, just whichever one I said first. So sorry, Cubs fan, I said White Sox first there, right? It causes controversy. Now, I, I am a sports fan. I love having a good sports talk. It's great. But if that's what we're devoted to, if that's what we're insisting on, we've messed up. We've missed the boat on that. Insist instead on the grace of God that he came for us, he loved us, he died for us, and we must share it with others. Insist on that, not on the things of this earth. Here's the conclusion that Paul gives. He gives some final instructions in verses 12 through 13 that are specific to the to the people that Titus is ministering to. Uh, so we're gonna jump down here to verse 14. Titus 3, verse 14 says this. And let, we're, sorry, and let our people learn to devote themselves to good works so as to help cases of urgent need and not be unfruitful. That's what I want for us here, by the way. I want us to be devoted to good works, not because it makes us look good, but it because it makes Christ look good. Makes him look amazing. The last thing I want it to be is about us. It's all for him and his glory. 
The other passage that, again, I closed with my last sermon on this and I can't help it, it's, it's 2 Corinthians 5.20. Be ambassadors. So do good works and as you're doing good works, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf, behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That's our cry. I want, you to, I want to do these good works and represent Christ well so that you can be reconciled to God, so that you can come to know him. So as we close here, I want to give us just some pictures and images of how our team represented and were ambassadors in Mexico. Uh, the first night, one of the first things we did was we sent out invitations for the carnival that we did, and then this was the carnival. Uh, we had people come, and uh, they were raising money for their youth group to go out to camp, again, that we helped support. And uh, then it was relationship building. Carnivals are really big in Mexico, apparently. And so uh, it was a big deal. Uh, lots of people came. It was a great time. Uh, we got to fellowship with a lot of their church members and then serve the community. And so it's bridge building with an opportunity of hopefully someday sharing the word of God. Uh, so that's the first part there. Uh, second picture is the same at night. They don't want to stop doing it, so they just move everything closer to the lights. Uh, that way it's safe and uh, you're not in the dark and they keep selling and keep having fun and keep fellowshipping. We should maybe do that here as well. Just keep the lights on as long as you want. Fellowship for as long as you want. Uh, maybe not. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, third picture here we have is called the green line, and it's called the green line for some reason. Um, it's very green, all right? That, that whole middle strip is like the greenest grass we've ever seen because they literally take tanks and just water it nonstop. So it's dust everywhere else because it was a dry season. So uh, dust everywhere else and sand, uh, but right here, they call it the green line. And so what we did was what they call green line testimonies. Uh, if you want to be out of your comfort shell, I highly recommend doing this. Uh, not Well, you can go to Aguas Calientes and do it, but just do it any time. Uh, we took a group to the park here and set up a base where we played games. And then the rest of us split up in groups of four or five and went and shared our testimony with people that didn't speak our language. And so the Hansons translated for us. And I can't tell you how encouraging that was, at least for me personally. That was probably one of my favorite nights, just going and talking with people. It's one of the most like thrill. Like, I, we just went to Kings Island and we rode roller coasters. Great thrill. Even better thrill, walking up to a stranger and trying to share your testimony with them in a foreign language. It's amazing to see what God can do through that. And so the Hansen family were, were able to be our translators for each group. It was amazing to see the conversations and talk about the conversations we had with people. I would encourage us to do that here. Just, just have a conversation with someone that needs to, to know Christ, that's sitting alone by themselves. Just say, hey, how can I help you? Are you alone? And then try and share the gospel. Look for ways to turn those conversations towards Christ. It's as simple as saying, hey, can I share my testimony with how Christ has impacted my life? I would love to do that with you and go from there. Again, this was uh, the church. The next picture is the church service where you open the garage and that's the room. So that's the, the church. And then if you look to the right, which I don't have a picture of that, that was the stage where Sam and the worship band would preach and sing from. So it, it's literally just that room, and it was an awesome time of serving, singing in a foreign language, knowing that we're singing praises to God. We knew the tune, and we knew what the words were, but we were speaking them in a language that we didn't know. What an awesome way to see a little picture of what the kingdom of heaven's gonna be like when we're all united singing together. This is uh, the foot. Uh, the next picture is the foot of the mountain, dead man uh, mountain there. We climbed the foot. We, that's the lowest part of the mountain. Um, we, we're like 7,500 feet, I think it said, so not like 10,000 or anything cool like that, but um, really awesome. So they told us this, was, I told you we were gonna be doing a hike. This was not a hike, this was a climb, all right? So a number of us almost died, but we all made it, all right? So we're there, I'm still here today, praise the Lord. It was amazing. Um, even in that, we came across people on the trail, and that, I couldn't help but think, are we representing Christ well as we're trying not to complain about the heat or the sweat or how bad this is? But it was amazing. And so this is the top, our team made it, and we did our study of Titus that morning or that day uh, at the top of the mountain there. Uh, this again is a migrant center. 
Uh, this was our food and essentials team. So food team there, uh, serving out of crock pots. Again, Jenny made the, all that food. It was awesome. It was great. Um, and then she had essentials for uh, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, things that we probably take for granted. And I just opened a drawer this morning and saw five toothbrushes in there. I'm like, how? the dentist gives those out. They're like, awesome, great. But they need it. They have to have it. And they're missing it. And so it's just an opportunity to, to bless them and encourage them with a meal and some of those essentials. Uh, next slide uh, was uh, just a part of the park that we cleaned up. Uh, it gets a lot of trash. And so we went and cleaned up uh, the park before we did the carnival. And then uh, after, or not the carnival, before we did the VBS, uh, we cleaned up the park. And then we went to another park and I don't have an image. I wish I had a before and after of the other park we cleaned up. Cause man, I, I, I wasn't there, but I heard the stories that it was amazing how much just trash was cleaned up. And so they're super appreciative of, of us being able to do that. Another thing that wasn't on our list, but we were able to do it. So uh, taking out the trash. Uh, this next photo then is the government official. We, we had an opportunity. This is another thing that God provided, another divine appointment. We got to meet with the government official right across from the migrant center. And he is in charge of trying to help people get legally either visas or working uh, status in Mexico or getting into the United States. And so we got to meet with this official and the goal was for Sam to build a bridge with him just to say how could they help the migrant center right across the street even more effectively because they're really not helping at all at this point. And so one of the things they're trying to do is build bridges so that they can get people help and especially the essentials more than just the rice and beans that uh, Jesus is able to provide for them. Uh, so that was a divine appointment moment. They wanted to understand why would a group from Chicago come to Aguas Calientes, go to the migrant center and feed them when we have people here doing it already. And so it was an opportunity to hopefully share the gospel with that gentleman there. Um, the next slide then is the VBS day. I have a video for this, but I didn't put it in there just for time's sake. But that's a, that's a group singing. Um, and we would, we would hold up the signs. So we didn't have projectors or anything. We'd just hold up signs, and they would read off of them, and then you'd move the sign, and you'd go to the next one. It was, uh, we're not going to do it right now, but one of the favorite songs was uh, um, Inside Out. Oh, I just messed it up already. Inside, uh, inside Outside, Upright, Downright, Happy All the Time. So we were singing that in Spanish, and Man, I can't sing it in English, and <laughs> it was harder. It's harder in Spanish. So, but that was one of their favorites because they would get really fast, and by the end, I'm just going. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. All right, it's done. Sweet. So, uh, next slide then is one of the images of the games got a little out of control. I had to um, splash Jake with a water balloon, so it broke right over his head. It was a great image. Uh, so, thanks whoever caught that. But we would do games with them, and the kids just loved the games. And I put this one in here because this VBS camp that we did. A uh, day camp was at a place where Operation Christmas Child uh, was one of the reasons that this church started at this location. So Operation Christmas Child went to this location, and out of that, a church started. So think through that. When we're doing Operation Christmas Child coming up here, think through that. You could impact a church being planted somewhere across the world. It's an awesome, just awesome thought to think through as we were doing that. Final picture, then, is our team here. We got to tour Agos Calientes, uh, learn some of the history, some of the culture of the area. Um, but even more importantly, we just got to, again, meet with people and see how the Hansen's mission field is really being impacted. Um, there are a lot of people lost. And I would, I would argue that most of the people that say they're religious are just that. They're religious. It's very, I would say it's very similar to what we have here in America, where people are religious on Sundays, maybe, but, or Easter and Christmas, but then not the rest of the time. And so if I could just ask you to pray for the Hansen family as they're ministering to people, they just had another group there this past week doing similar things that we did with them. And then this next week they have their youth camp. So they are busy people, but I wanna really encourage us as we're closing. When did the missions trip end, team? It doesn't end, right? So even though our time in Mexico ended, the missions trip is still going. We are still on mission for Christ. I pray that as a church body, we are always on mission, that we're not just looking forward to the next missions trip or that we're celebrating, hey, man, I did that missions trip and it was great. 
we want to celebrate it for sure. But if we're hanging on to that as, mm, that was our one thing that we did for Christ this year, we've messed up. Messed up royally. Instead, what we should be doing is being ambassadors for Christ in our jobs, in our houses, in our homes, in our friends, families, wherever we're at, our enemies, we should be on mission for Christ. I know this was a little longer than what we normally do this morning, and I just want to thank you all for bearing with us. All right, it was a great morning. I hope you were uh, encouraged by this, um, but praise the Lord for what he's doing in Mexico, and praise the Lord, hopefully, for what he's doing here in the United States. So may we be doing uh, our best to represent him this morning. Let me close us in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we love you. We're so thankful again for your word that you are not the God of only the, the United States, you're not only the God of our church, but you're the God of the earth. You're the God of the universe. You're the one and only true living God, and there is none like you. Lord, may we look for qualified leaders to be equipping us. May we be teaching your sound doctrine. May we insist on it, even to the point of that we're sharing it with others, no matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing, may we always be serving you, ultimately, as we serve others. Lord, thank you again for the Hansons. I pray for them even today and their ministry that's coming up here this week for their camp ministry. I pray that the youth would hear your word, that they would, those that know him, that know you, would be transformed to be more like you, that those that don't know you could come to know you even today. I pray that same thing here for us as a church family, that anyone hearing this message that doesn't know you, that today would be the day of salvation. What an awesome moment that would be that we would submit our lives to you in every way. Lord, I also pray for those of us that do know you, that we would be transformed to be more like you and follow you even closer. Lord, we love you and we're so thankful for all that you've given to us. Give us an awesome week of ministry ahead of us now and just allow us to, again, turn our hearts to you now as we sing praises to your great name. Pray these things in your name, amen. Amen. Would you stand with us as we sing one more song to our Lord? And... Uh... Just remembering as we go on with our week that, you know, the mission doesn't end. That we are ambassadors for Christ. You know, we're living in a time here in America where we're genuinely living in a post-Christian nation. There are people in your neighborhoods, there are people around us who have never heard the gospel message. And so I pray that uh, we not take that take that, you know, for granted that we take this wonderful day of recapping missions to, to help us to have the courage and the boldness to reach out to those around us, not assuming that everyone's heard the gospel because there's a huge segment of our culture that has never heard the gospel here in the United States. So, amen. Sing with us, please.
Awesome. All right, you can be seated just for one minute here. Um, Just a couple closing thoughts here as we're uh, being dismissed this morning. Uh, First one, the outreach team is planning a back-to-school bash. Now, students, I know you don't want to hear that word. School starts like this week, all right? So we're praying for you. It's going to be awesome. Teachers, we're praying for you. It's going to be amazing. Homeschool parents, we're praying for you. It's going to be great. Whatever uh, school you're in, I need you to know the outreach team is planning a back-to-school bash on Saturday, September 2nd here at the church. Everyone is invited, but we also need help serving ice cream, handing out, um, handing out giveaways, and meeting the families in our community. So for more information, stop by the outreach table in the foyer, um, but just be praying for this opportunity. This is the first year we're trying this. Uh, we're just praying, again, that it'll be really successful and go really well. Uh, with that being said, if you are uh, a teacher of any kind, whether it's homeschool, public school, or uh, the uh, university level, could you just raise your hand? I'm not going to embarrass you and have you stand up for anything, but could you just raise your hand if you work in our school system somehow? A few? All right, sweet. Um, I want to make sure that we close our time praying for you. Um, I really believe the school is our greatest mission field, uh, but we also have another missionary here with us this morning, and we're going to pray for him at the same time. So I'm going to double dip. So Jesse, if you want to come on up real quick, and uh, I'm gonna, we're going to pray for Jesse. He was here during our ABF hour. If you didn't get a chance to talk to Jesse, stop by the table, talk to him. This is an awesome man that's representing Christ across the world. And so uh, talk to him. He had great stories this morning and really encouraged us. I pray that um, you're encouraged as you're here. And then uh, again, talk to Jesse. And so we're gonna close praying for Jesse and the ministry that he's doing across the nation. And then we're gonna pray for the teachers here and for our back to school bash at the same time. We can do that, right? It's good. All right, so let's close our service this morning. Uh, Dear Father, Lord, we love you. We're so thankful again that Jesse could be here with us this morning. We just pray for the ministry that he's involved in as we heard from the ABF hour. Lord, may your word be taught clearly. May it be uh, taking hold in people's lives and transforming them to be made new, to know you personally. And we pray that for ourselves here as well. Pray for our teachers and our students that are going back to school, just that it's an awesome year of ministry, uh, doing the work that they need to, but also representing you well in their mission field. So give us a great week here as back to school starts. Give Jesse a great time here in the States as he's uh, being encouraged, uh, hopefully, and encouraging us as we hear from him. And so give us a great week ahead of us now. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Uh, If you're here today and you need prayer, we would love to be praying for you. And ask. uh, we'll have people up here that would be glad to do that. Otherwise, go see Jesse at the table. It's going to be a great day. You're all dismissed. We love you, church family.